the help helpline they call it and the teachers who do would say you can ask further questions there was just did every any of you hear about what happened in sydney a school a very well-known school in sydney called the the um, um oh now i can't remember plc the um no the ladies college the the presbyterian ladies college very prestigious down there started doing this they had open phone tests and it made the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald. That's the equivalent of whatever the biggest newspaper in, in London is these days. And I got calls from all over the place. And they were talking about it in Uzbekistan and all over the world. What the kids say, what's really funny is the adults are all up in arms about this. What the kids say is this, because somebody once came up to me after one of my presentations and said, Mr. Prensky, we have to tell you this, most of our tests are already are open phone tests. You guys just don't know it. <laughs> And that's really true. And again, if I had more time, I would show you a YouTube where the kids teach each other how to text in class without getting caught. So finally, the role of the teacher, and I'm going to go real fast here. There's a lot of separation between how students think and teachers think, and you can look at these. But it's very, very different. And the role of technology, which some think is engagement, and that's why we're doing this, to get the kids engaged. It's not true. You can add all the technology you want. It won't help much if you don't change the way you teach. The only role of technology, this is so important that you should, I should make you learn it, repeat it, stand it up, memorize it. The only role is to support that new teaching paradigm. The only way technology supports lecturing is what I'm doing, showing pictures and, few fit and videos. That's not enough. That's not anywhere enough. That's what technology is about. It can't support the old way, the, the lecturing way. So we have to change how we teach before technology can even begin. It doesn't help the old paradigm, it helps the new way. It's required almost. And we've moved in these, what's interesting about technology is that just like the people tools have moved, the non-people tools from memorized poems and texts and Homer's time to the textbooks and blackboards of paper of most of our time, to these electronic tools of the future, they are people tools too, because they connect people. So interestingly enough, we suddenly wind up with everything being people tools. The lecture paradigm requires new technology, the new paradigm demands it. In the lecture paradigm, it gets in the way. But in the new paradigm, it sets us free. And until we move, the technology actually hinders us. You stick the technology in, and guess what? In schools in New York and other places in the world, they gave every kid a laptop, they did all this. A year or two later, they took them out. They said, it didn't help our education, educationally empty. Why? You know, the kids were Facebooking their way through the day. Why? Because they didn't change how they taught. They didn't give the kids, as their basic work, hard, difficult, fun, engaging stuff to do on the computer with each other that they can only do so the kids Facebook. We need to be using the latest tools, that's great, I know that's a lot of your job, but we only need to use them in the right way, which is supporting that kids teaching themselves with the teacher as a help. Change the paradigm. You want to do professional development, and I always ask people, do you do unprofessional development now? But if you want to do anything, don't do it about technology. Do it about changing the paradigm and not letting the kids use the technology. Because this partnering thing is absolutely crucial. We have to let the students do what they do well, which is use the technology, find the content, create stuff, and the teachers do what they do well, which is evaluate, provide the context, find the quality. Examples. In question bed learning, where some schools have renamed their students researchers, the teacher doesn't tell, the teacher asks. Not, these are the three causes of the Crimean War, and take notes. It's, guess what kids, there were three causes of the Crimean War. You have 15 minutes to find out what they were and to make a presentation. Then we'll discuss. The teacher can suggest the tools and topics, but the kids research and create the output. The teacher learns about the technology, sure, from their kids, and the kids learn about the quality and rigor from their teachers. The teacher evaluates for the quality and the context and the students keep improving their work Problem-based learning, we have that as well. There's a school in France, 
that started out with traditional lecture-based teaching, they got lousy scores. They added problem-based learning. Their scores went way up. They decided to drop the traditional course to go with only problem-based learning, and their scores went up even further because the kids were engaged. So when you ask the question of how teachers should use technology, I have an apostasy. I'm an apostate. I will tell you something that a lot of people won't. I will say it's very important that teachers don't even bother wasting their time learning to create with these tools. They don't have to make a podcast. They don't have to make a video. They don't have to do a blog. Unless they want to. Unless they love it. And they say that's the greatest thing. Because, the reason, the students can do that and they want to. So you don't say, here's a blog class. You say, who knows how to make a blog? Teach each other. Let's have one tomorrow. The teachers should not use the technology for the students. That's really, really important. That's the whole thing about the whiteboard. You don't want a teacher doing the same stage on the stage, but having a slightly more technological tool. The kids say, don't try to keep up with the technology. You can't, and more importantly, you only look stupid. And think about that and keep that in mind, you know, when you go and try to get some gas, drive away. I mean, it's so expensive, you might as well take a pump. Because what we do instinctively is when we have these problems, incorrect information, only source of Wikipedia, distractions, used to get answers, phones used inappropriately, our first reaction is to ban this stuff, which is the stupidest thing in the world, because even Harvard Business School professor, I mean, Harvard Medical School professors have used Wikipedia very quickly and successful. We can use it in a totally different way. You have problems with the Wikipedia, you don't like the articles, have your kids write a good one. Have them figure out something that's happening in, in Worcestershire that doesn't, isn't on the Wikipedia, compete to write the best article, and get it up there, change the world by putting a new article on Wikipedia. And then, then the teacher can deal with the stuff the kids don't get automatically, like search versus research. Search anything goes. Research to read more than one source. Follow the traditions. Don't just not plagiarize because it's bad, but understand how intellectual property is changing, that in certain situations like mashups and new things we didn't used to do in the past, but they're okay now, let's think about it. And you can do that for any of these tools. So I'm going to leave you with the five stages of what I call teachers in the new paradigm, or teachers in technology. <laughs> First stage is hiding. Okay? Big the door, we're scared. We're not going to let it in. It might hurt us. Second stage is panic. Right? Third stage is acceptance. Okay, it's bad, but it's, if we don't turn it on, it's not going to hurt us, right? Fourth stage is comfort. This big bad thing called technology isn't going to hurt us. Guess what? We can work with But, ladies and gentlemen, if that's all we do, if we get to the fourth stage, we haven't gone nearly enough. We haven't done the job. Because you have to get to the fifth stage with technology and teaching, which is power. <laughs> Getting the technology to do something really important that you can't do without it. So we have this continuum. We have to get our people over to the right. We, need, we don't even have a way to measure right now. We need some kind of a rubric or ways to tell people how they're doing along this dimension. There's no question that changing and moving in these directions is scary, but people have to feel the fear and do it anyway. And as a very wise person pointed out to me recently, that feel the fear and do it anyway is the definition of courage. So I hope that we and all our fellow educators, I've got to take the bounces out again, will have the courage to change. I'm very optimistic about it. I hope so for our students' sake and for our own.